We are tied to a piece. This game summary is sponsored by Budweiser. Looking back at this game in the second inning, a two-out single by Oliver and a two-run homer by Billy Hatcher. Pirates waited until the fourth inning. They had a double by Bell, a single by Bonilla, double by Martinez. And we are tied. We had a 4-3 game, a 2-1 game, and 2-2 going into the fifth inning of this one. Tip of the cap to Lou Pinella. A tipping his own cap after giving that intentional walk and it paid off. Struck out lean and got the pitcher. Lou, one of the few managers in the major leagues that still wears his watch when he's in uniform. You ought to be out of uniform wearing your watch. Here the strike to Zane from Zane Smith to Billy Hatcher, who cracked the home run into left center in the second inning. His first home run ever in this park, and he used to play for Pittsburgh. His first hit in the playoff, he's one for four. Baseball, one of the only team games, if not the only team game, outside doubles tennis without a clock and lose wearing his watch. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Catcher batting in the number eight spot. He gets ahead on the count, two balls and a strike. up and that ball is a base hit and after hitting a home run he's going to get a double and slight gets it back in Dane Smith allows another base knock that's number six for Cincinnati and the pitcher will probably try to bunt him over to third in game one we were talking about the lanes of the plate and how it was important for guys to go inside and outside well for a guy like Zane Smith it's important for him to stay down in the strike zone because he throws a sinker and most of the hits off Smith this afternoon have been up. Well, Hatcher with a home run and a double. And the batter is Danny Jackson. I was watching Jackson practice his bunting the other day. He was doing a very good job of it. And every once in a while, he would pull the bat back and swing at it. So let's see what he does here. First baseman charging. Bunt foul. Bounced up and cracked him in the head. Uh, what you, what he's trying to do here is make the third baseman feel the ball. You remember in game one with Bob Patterson on the mound? This hits him in the jaw. That doesn't hurt, though. Remember with Bob Patterson on the mound in the ninth inning, first and second, nobody out? We talked about it the next day. You try to get the third baseman to feel the ball, and that's what Jackson's trying to do right here. What do you mean that didn't hurt? No, nah, that didn't hurt. <laughs> he bunts the ball to third, and King has to field it. So Jackson did his job and Lean took the throw. Five four on the sacrifice. See when you get the third baseman to feel the ball then you get him away from the bag. Now that's where the runner's going to. So that's why it's important to make the third baseman feel the ball. Good bunt by Jackson. See King vacates the bag. Hatcher's over in the sacrifice successfully. Fine job of bunting by Danny Jackson. And that's one of the reasons why Canella has Barry Larkin batting in the leadoff spot. He said, when I bunt a runner over, I want to have somebody up there who can drive the runner home. Larkin with 65 RBIs on the season. That's a lot for a guy who batted in the number one hole most of the year. Infield is in. Larkin takes ball one. He's grounded to short and lined out to left. And there we see King Bell and on the right side leaned and Martinez playing in for the play at the plate. Ball won the count. Over the low. That's ball two. How does it look from upstairs on the Goodyear blimp? We did have some rain this morning here in Pittsburgh. So you see those wet patches? And it looks like a pinball machine, doesn't it? Runner at third, one out. Pirates just tied it. Cincinnati threatening here in the fifth. And a foul ball makes it two and one. At 
the end of today's game, Tim McCarver and I will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game. Chevrolet will then donate $1,000 in the player's behalf to the Special Olympics. Larkin trying to get Billy Hatcher home from third. The squeeze is a possibility here. That one caught the corner. Running the count to two and two and diminishing the chances yeah. of the squeeze play. Not with two strikes, because obviously if you bunt it and it's foul, it's a strikeout. Leo DeRocher used to like the two strike squeeze play when he was managing. There was never anybody who bunted a ball better with two strikes than Rod Carew. And that ball is fair and the throw. Say it. an interesting play with King making the save but unable to throw him out and a bang bang play at first. Now we'll see with the infield in the runner at third has to make the ball go through. That's why Hatcher dives back to third. The third base coach told him make the ball go through. He steps on third and now remarkably I think he has him. I think I think Barry Larkin was out. What a play by Jeff King to save a run but I think he got an out that he wasn't given credit for. So it's first and third, one out. What a play by Jeff King. There's the, he's got the glove and the foot comes down. He was out. Here it is again. He's out. Foot's not on the bag yet. He's out. Great play by King. And the call was safe, and it's first and third with one out, and Duncan is the batter. He's 0 for 2 in this game. Strike one to him. And this pitcher, Zane Smith, who got one double play ball early in this game in the fourth inning, would like another right here. Two to the score in the fifth, first and third one out. Uh oh, deep into left field, might leave the park. It is gone for a three run over. And it's 5 2 Cincinnati. Pirates were thinking double play, but the batter was thinking something else. He was thinking double pump. We talked about it before. Duncan 0 for 8 before this home run. The leading hitter in the majors against left handed pitching. And he gets a fastball right down the heart of the plate. Doesn't take him long. Boy, I mean, he gets all of this more to center than to left. He wasn't sure it was gone for a period of time, but then he knew. Seven and a half years in the Dodger organization, coming to the Reds last year. Two home runs against Zane Smith, further evidence that he's getting the ball up. That's the second one he's watched sail out of the ballpark. One by Hatcher with a man on, and this one by Duncan. With two on and Duncan's first hit of the playoff, as Tim told you, he picked the perfect spot, makes it five to two. Now a strike into Chris Sabo. Mariano Duncan, Chris Sabo at the dish. He's one for two. Boy, the ball sounds good here when you hit it in this park, doesn't it? Sure does. One ball, one strike to Sabo. It's low two and one. That's a funny thing. You know when you really hit a ball you don't you don't hear the sound as much as when you don't hit it well. There's that little click that healthy click off the fat part of the bat. When you don't hit it well you hear it more than when you hit it well. Chasing a bad ball low it's two and two. It's that sound that is pure to, to all hitters it's that little click and that's what Duncan has done that's what Hatcher has done click click five to two right hander is Bill Landrum the left hander is Bob Kipper in the pirate bullpen in the right field corner bouncing ball to short to Jay Bell that's the second out of the inning well tomorrow we have a double header of league championship series it starts at three Eastern for game three of the American League championships between Boston and the world champion Oakland A's. Then tomorrow night, CBS Sports, live prime time, 8 Eastern time, the fourth game of this one between the Reds and the Pirates.
So a doubleheader on CBS tomorrow. Eric Davis fouls one. He still hasn't hit his stride. He's one out of nine. But the so-called lesser hitters are doing it for the Reds. Hatcher and Duncan. Ball one. In the fifth and Cincinnati has regained the lead 5-2. Don't count this Pirate Club out. They've shown us a couple of times already how well they come back. Two and two. One and two on the foul. There's Bill White, the president of the National League. He doesn't care who wins. He just wants to see good baseball. Former Giant, former Cardinal, former Philly. Easy travel between these two cities, Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. He was also a former announcer. That doesn't mean when you quit announcing, you become the National League president, does it? Does for him, I guess. That's the way it worked for him. Davis waiting. Two and two. That home run by Duncan took the wind out of the sails of this crowd. He waited until he was 0 for 8 before he got a hit. Inside the Davis. Three and two. They're waving the green weenies, putting the whammy on Cincinnati. Struck him out. Davis in one out of ten. But three runs on three hits. And Cincinnati's back on top. The score 5 2. Very nice, Jack. Now Jeff King leads it off. Different situation here. A 3 2 pitch. Cards keep coming back. We're seeing the type of op offensive production from both teams today that we used to see. And now Jay Bell, who has one for two, is up. Strike up in the zone. Strike one. Come on, Jay. Come on, Jay. Bell's that fan. He's been an effective hitter with runners on base. One and one. Reds have eight hits and the Pirates now have five. Danny Jackson has to get through this fifth inning to be credited with a victory if the Reds win. Bell hits it to pass third, a base hit. And Bell is such a good bunter, it was surprising to look up and see Sabo playing as far in as he was. And that ball zipped by him on this turf. Now the first two are on, and here come the Bucks. I think Sabo had an idea about Bell bunting. Not only is, it, is he a good sacrifice bunter, he had 39 this year, but whether Sabo was back or in, that's a base hit all the way. Here's Van Slyke. These Pirates keep doing things. We can't show you that championship moment, but we will. Van Slyke drew a walk and scored a run in the fourth. He's the tying run at the plate. Hits it in the left. Might drop. That ball is caught by Davis. He made a good play. Make no mistake about Davis. Sore shoulder, bad knees previously. He is a wonderful defensive player in center or in left. That's a first down. Gold glove to his credit. And a gold glover hits it. I tell you, Davis eats up so much ground, and you don't think that he's running fast. He makes a relatively easy play out of that ball. That sign for Bobby Bonilla. He's hit the ball hard twice today. Lined out to short. He singled home a run. Two on, one out. Boy, hit it hard again, but foul. Strike one. That's one of you always moving about up there. 
He hops up and down and he dances. One ball, one strike. On deck is Barry Bonds. In the stands, his daddy, Bobby Bonds. What a great player he was. Now he's saying, come on, Bobby, for Bonilla. And Jackson got that low pitch past him one and two. Yeah, that was a biting slider there out of the strike zone. Watch it, watch it bite down and in to Bonilla. Bobby swinging over that pitch. That was a nasty slider from Jackson there. And Jackson's ahead on the count, one and two. Bumped him up for the second out. Infield fly rule applies. First baseman Benzinger makes the catch. And they're two gone. So the Pirates put their first two on, and it indeed will be up to the younger Bonds. Barry has struck out and fouled out to short. First time any Pittsburgh Pirates player has been in the 30-30 club. Barry's dad, Bobby, did it five times. Five times. 30 home runs, 30 stolen bases. Bonds is one out of nine in the series. And a strike from Jackson is pitching extremely well. Here comes the Pirate train roaring through the stadium. And ahead on the count, and Bonds looks at it low. There's Barry. And his dad sweats it out. Probably more nervous now than he ever was when he was playing. One and one to the hitter. Played off, ball two. Two on, two out. Second base, Jeff King, a leadoff single, and Jay Bell got a hit, and slight flight out, and Bonilla popped up. Three and one. With two out, Jackson is not going to give in to this hitter. Even if he has to pitch to the next batter with the base is loaded. Two on, two out. Ball four. That's the third pass given by Jackson. And he would rather do that than give in to Bonds. He loads the bases. After ball four. <laughs> <laughs> Exhale, Bobby. A visit to the mound. Base had loaded two out. The Pirates left the base and loaded in the fourth. And Pinnell is talking to Jackson about pitching to Carmelo Martinez. He has Norm Charlton warmed up in the bullpen after Scudder had warmed up earlier. Hey, you, Lou did something that if you're a catcher, you don't like with the catcher and the pitcher right there. Lou asked the catcher how he was throwing. Joe, Joe Oliver said fine. You can see Danny Jackson saying five. You know, you try to build up that communication with the pitcher if you're a catcher. And you don't want to tell a manager that a pitcher's not throwing well while he's out there. Uh -huh. I mean, you don't want to do that. You gotta tell him behind his back. Oh, you gotta you <laughs> gotta find a way. You know, you, if, if you're a manager, you gotta ask the pitcher. You can't put a catcher in that situation and ask him how a pitcher's throwing. You gotta ask the pitcher. Well, Martinez popped out his first time up and then doubled home a run in the fourth. Hit a double pass third. Base it loaded, two out. Pirates trailing by three. Ball one. Nice play by Oliver using that catcher's mitt like a first baseman's glove. Two singles and a walk have loaded them up. Two out. Popped it up. On the infield. And who wants it? Larkin takes charge. And the Pirates leave three more. They've left seven. Put the first two on. Failed to score. They trail by three. We'll return to Three River Stadium 
After this word from your local station, it's 5-2 Cincinnati. We're back here at Three Rivers Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Third game of the National League playoff series. It's tied at a game apiece, but as we go into the sixth inning of this one, Cincinnati is on top by the score of 5-2. to two. They've out hit the Pirates 8-6. Pittsburgh has left seven. They left the bases loaded in the last two innings. With your blimp overhead showing us those shots, and we're coming around to the business hour. Here's a home run by Billy Hatcher in the second, following a two-out hit by Joe Oliver. The former Pirate player knocked one out of here for the first runs of the game. Pittsburgh came back to tie it, but with two on and one out in the fifth inning, the long ball struck again, and here we go into the sixth inning. First up, Lynn Braggs. Bill Landrum, the new pitcher. He pumps a strike in there. Braggs is one for two. Landrum, seven and three, and 13 saves during the season. He's a former member of the Cincinnati Club. Five to the Reds leading. One and one from Landry. See, this is one of those trap innings for Lou Pinella. Jim Leland's trying to get, by bringing in the right-hander, he wants Pinella to exchange Braggs and Joe Oliver, the third hitter in this inning. But a three-run lead negates that. The ball's foul off the bat of Braggs, one and two. That's why when you start a left-handed pitcher, then the manager, Lou Pinella in this case, has mostly right-handed hitters in there, so Jim Leland brings in the right-hander to get Lou to maybe change, put in a pinch hitter. But Lou's not biting because he's got a three-run lead. Tie ball game, you might see a change here. Looks like they're looking across a poker table at each other. 5-2, the Reds on top. See who has the best cards. Room. We used to pitch for the Reds and the Cubs, working for the Pirates here in the sixth. And he got it by him. Here's the biggest hit of this game, the two-on, one-out home run by Duncan in the fifth inning, and he really smashed it. This game being seen in 61 countries, including the Dominican Republic. I'll guarantee you they are dancing in the streets of San Pedro de Macariz. That's where Mariano Hales, along with a ton of other Major League Baseball talent. Todd Benzinger is up. The switch hitter is one for two. And he skies it for Van Slyke. Can he get there? Yep, a good play, two out. Van Slyke can go get him. Takes the hit away from Benzinger. Ball had too much hang time. Todd hits it well, but Van Slyke with a good jump, and he makes a rather easy play out of it. I'll tell you, between Van, Van Slyke and Barry Bonds, you're not going to see a lot of balls fall in left center field. They can flat track them down. Oliver is singled and grounded into a double play, and Landrum gets a strike. We're in the top of the sixth, 5 2 Cincinnati. Popped it up to the right side for Jose Lee. Down go the Reds. One, two, three. And Pittsburgh comes to bat in the bottom of the sixth inning. They trail 5 2. He's had a double, and he was given a walk. Had walk, an intentional walk the last time up in the fourth inning to load the bases. And with one out, Jose Lean struck out. That's the biggest pitch of this ball game for Danny Jackson. The strike out of Lean. Bases were loaded with one out at the time, and Jackson gets ahead on the count here in the bottom of the sixth. Then they'll send up Lean and then a pinch hitter. So the Pirates will need another hitter. Out of play, strike two. Danny Jackson with surgery on his left toe. That put him out for last year. When he came back this year, he went on the disabled list three times and told me that one of the reasons was he was trying to do too much. 
His toe gave him problems. He tried to compensate and ended up hurting his shoulder. They thought initially it was a rotator cuff injury, but he went out the next day. He said, I'm going to prove the doctors wrong. He did, and that's why he came back in September. And as you see today, he is throwing exceptionally well. Very miffed at the writers for asking him questions about his physical well-being. 0-2 to the batter, a broken bat ground ball to Sabo. Have plenty of time, and he gets the first out. Now let's go down to James Brown with Bobby Bonds. All right, Jack, thank you very much. Obviously, your son's having a little difficult time right now. One for nine in the series up to this point. Have you said anything to him at all? What have you noticed he hasn't been doing? Well, you know, this is the first time I've watched him live. You know, watch him on TV. And, and, and today, it looked like he's just pressing a little bit. Uh, looked like he's uh, grabbing the bat a little bit uh, too tight. And he's just a little bit tense. So I'm, I'm going to talk to him afterwards to try to get him uh, to relax a little bit. Jose Lean hits it fair past third. And that'll be a one-out double here in the sixth inning. Pirates are specializing in two base hits today. That's their fourth. Lean to saying, why didn't I do that with the base and loaded? I was thinking the same thing. Timing is everything. And here Jose Lean rifles one by Chris Sabo at third base. As Jack said, the fourth double of the game. But he was called out on strikes the last time up. The base is loaded and one out. He would love to exchange that. It would be a tight ball game. At the time he was called out, the score was two to two, bases loaded and only one out. He took the call, strike three, and then Zane Smith tapped back to Danny Jackson. And we're going to have a pinch hitter for Bill Landrum, who pitched one perfect inning with a strikeout along the way. And that brings a visit to the mound by the pitching coach. Gary Reedus is going to pinch hit, and Jackson's visited by Stan Williams. Williams is going to make the pitching change. Stan Williams and Lou Pinello waiting until Gary Reedus was announced, and now they're going to go to the right-hander, Rob Dibble. So Dibble follows Jackson to the mound, one on, one out. Danny Jackson pitched well, five and a third, two runs, seven hits, struck out five, walked three, one intentionally. He gives way to Rob Dibble who now makes his second appearance in the playoff. He was eight and three with 11 saves during the regular season. And we have more from James Brown. All right Jack back with Bobby Bonds the father of Barry Barnes. You were describing to me what Barry should be doing differently with his swinging position. Show us that. Well you know I'm watching him right now and right through here you can see where he's gripping the bat so tight he actually has ripples right near his, in his arm. And uh, if, if you have these ripples, that shows me that you're really tense. So basically, I got to have him just loosen up. Start off with the bat loose in his hand. When he swings and approaches the ball, he'll take the natural strength grip and hit the ball. But right now, he's almost like choking a baseball bat. And as Tim McCarver said, that comes from a man 30 35 consecutive years back upstairs. There's Barry on the bench. Now on the mound, making his third playoff appearance in as many games is the fireballer, Ron Dibble. First up against him is Gary Reedus. Big swing and strike one. You might wonder why Jim Leland isn't employing a left-handed hitter when the Pirates still trail by one or by three. And Jeff King's on deck. If Reedus gets on, you can expect a guy like Sid Bream or somebody like that, Wally Backman, to pinch hit for Jeff King. One and one to Reedus. Reedus usually has a good batting eye. He can be a dangerous hitter and occasionally hit the long ball, not very often. Though. This is a bad matchup, though. You, but he, had, he was already announced. That's why Dibble was brought in the game. He couldn't reach that one. One and two. Reedus had six home runs during the season. And strikeouts are the norm whenever Dibble is pitching. He digs a better hole in front of the pitching rubber. We are in the bottom of the sixth. One on, one out. The 5 2 Cincinnati lead. One and two to Reedus. Former Cincinnati player. Just wins two and two. I don't think Reedus could have swung at that if he wanted to. Two and two. It's well and been well documented about this pitcher, Rob Dibble. He wants to be a closer someplace or be paid more money by the Reds. 
Three and two. They will walk people occasionally and then come back and strike them out. That was a slider. Joe Oliver just hanging on. They don't have much time to react when Dibble is pitching. Three and two. Leaned at second, one out. Struck him out. That's the second out of the game. Boy, that guy is something. He is something. He can blow. Good old fashioned hardball right here. Like baseball, you used to play in the pasture. High heat. You know, these uh, radar guns have a lot of variables in there, but the gun that we just used said 99 miles per hour on that pitch. The batter is Jeff King, one for three. On the inside corner, that ball moved. That's 44 miles over the speed limit. <laughs> that ball really jumped from Dibble, stayed on the corner. Leaned at second, two out. The Pirates have already stranded seven. That's strike two. Pittsburgh left the base and loaded in the fourth, put the first two on in the fifth, and never did score. Left the base and loaded. And a one out double here. They wasted a leadoff double in the third. So they have missed some chances. What are you thinking, Mr. Dibble? If you rub up that pelote. You're going to waste one. He's going to try to get him right here. Oh, and two, two out. That's the answer to that question. Two strikeouts for Dibble, who just came into the game, and now Pittsburgh has left eight, and they trail 5-2. We go into the seventh inning and let's look back at a National League Championship moment from Game 5, 1972. Here's a one one pitch. And a wild pitch in the ninth inning. And George Foster scored the winning run. And that nailed down the title for the Reds in 1972. Bob Moose, the pitcher, and Hal McCray was the hitter. And John Smiley's the new pitcher, the third pitcher of the day for the Pirates, his first appearance in the League Championship Series. He'll work in the seventh inning to the Cincinnati Ball Club and Billy Hatcher. Hatcher batting in the number eight spot. He bunts the ball. Tough play for Smiley. Couldn't get it out of the glove. Who had a double and a home run previously bunts safely to start the seventh inning. And the reason right handed hitters try to bunt against left handed pitchers is left handers fall toward the third base line. Watch Smiley. And it takes him a long time to unravel. And now he tries the shovel pass that never develops. So the third hit of the day for Billy Hatcher. He's homered, doubled, and single. And Smiley is greeted with that bunt single which is the ninth hit for the Reds. And now Dibble will try to get the ball down. And takes a strike from Smiley who would like the strike out, but you have to watch Hatcher in the running department. The runner over at first base, Billy Hatcher, swiped 30 bases this year. So if Smiley is careless, he'll take off. Dibble bunts it to third. The play will be to second by King. He got him. Now Dibble will run the bases with one out. The play went 1-6. But it too hard. Five, Jeff six, King. Excuse me. Uh-huh. Jeff King makes the play to second base. And you see Jay Bell sometimes a shortstop or a second baseman. They take on the posture of a first baseman. And that's what Jay Bell was doing right there, just making sure of the lead runner. Well, here's your favorite play. They put a jacket on Rob Dibble running the bases at first. 80 degrees. Rob Dibble's going to put the jacket on. One of the more overrated things in this grand game. 
And the first baseman Martinez will play behind Dibble with one out here in the seventh. The batter is Larkin, one for three. Pitch a strike from Smiley. Bob Gibson used to say, hey, when you're on base, you become a base runner. You're no longer a pitcher. And how many base runners do you see wearing warm-up jackets? Smiley has been a starter for the Pirates most of the time. This is low and away. Martinez playing behind Devil, of course. I mean, Devil, a relief pitcher, he's not going anywhere. Martinez then moving into the hole in case Larkin spanks it that way. 1 1 pitch has popped up, and that should be the second out. Leaned is under it. And that's the second out. Well, tonight on CBS, premier programming commences with Uncle Buck, no relation. <laughs> Followed by Major Dad, no relation. And then some fine programming, the 24th Annual Country Music Association Awards. All of that tonight on CBS. There's Who's Uncle Buck? Uncle Buck. Uncle Jack. <laughs> Runner at first, two out. Fly ball into left field, down the line, and curving. Foul at the last moment off the bat of Duncan. Duncan. Pirates are thinking has done enough damage today. He hit a three run, one out home run in the fifth inning to mark the difference in this game. It's 5 2. Gets out in front here, the ball down and in, and hits it into the Reds' bullpen. There it is. Clear out, guys, and see, they clear out. Nobody's there. To Smiley to hold the Reds right where they are. And the Pirates have the tough task of trying to break through against Dibble, or maybe Charlton, or maybe Myers. Line drive and another base hit for Duncan. He's two for four. Dibble stops at second. Well, had the sacrifice worked in this inning, that would have been another run for Cincinnati. Instead, they're two on two. Out. <laughs> Perez talking with Duncan. Fired fans are unhappy. Duncan, by the way, used to be a switch hitter when he was with the Dodgers, and he says that hitting primarily as a right-handed batter, he rarely switch hits anymore. But when you're hitting right-handed all the time, you do become more comfortable against left-handed pitching. That's been the big difference in his average this year, batting over 400 against left-handed. They boys one for three. Strike on the inside corner. Fine pitch from John Smiley. Four out of 17 during his career against this pitcher for Chris. The Reds have left only two. Pirates have left eight. Broken bat pop fly into center. Van Sly got there for the Now the Reds leave two and they've left four. It's seventh inning stretch time here in Pittsburgh. Cincinnati with two home runs has the lead five to two. CBS Sports coverage of Game Three of the 1990 National League Championship Series is brought to you by Toyota's quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. The employee owners of Avis, we're trying harder than ever. And by Budweiser, the king of beers. Remember, no when to say when. Rush hour in downtown Pittsburgh. We're looking at the Golden Triangle. The tallest buildings are the USX Tower and the PPG, the Pittsburgh Plate Gas, Plate Glass Building. And a look at the Ohio River. Downtown Pittsburgh. Ironically, that's been the problem today for the Pirates. Two guys with the Cincinnati Reds have gone downtown for all five runs. Those pictures from the Goodyear Blimp America. Here we are into the bottom of the seventh inning. Pittsburgh Pirates, when trailing after six innings this year, were 5 and 53. Only the St. Louis Cardinals and the Chicago Cubs had worse records. That's when they were trailing after six innings. They're 5 and 53. So against this Reds bullpen, it does not look good for the Buckos. 
They trail 5 2, and Jay Bell leads it off. He's had a single and a double. And he's had four hits in the playoff. And he hits it to Larkin. And there is one gone on the throw to Bensinger. You get something to swing at against Dibble, you might as well. Although some would say trailing by three ought to give Dibble a chance to walk in. But Bell went for the first one. That's one way this game has changed considerably. Yeah, that, that particular style of play is passe now in baseball. Fifteen years ago, if you're trailing by more than one run, where your home run with the bases empty doesn't mean anything. If you were trailing by more than one, you take a strike. Not so anymore. And slight ball one. He has walked twice. He's flying to left. And he wondered if he'd be able to pull the ball against Dibble, who has retired three in a row in relief of Danny Jackson. All right at the beginning of the day, we talked about defense. And Lou Pinella told us that's the first thing he thinks about when he makes out a lineup card. He said any offense you get is gravy. What you have to do is stop the other team from scoring. Defense or good pitching really shored up by good defense. And Slyke with one out. Strike two. Over in Cincinnati in the ninth inning of the second game, we saw some sparkling play from Barry Larkin at short. And Larkin has taken care of the first out in this inning. One and one the count. Like flinched and it's a strike. One and two. And a foul ball keeps Van Slyke up there. One and two with one out. Dibble retired the first two that he faced on strikes in the sixth that got Bell on a ground ball. He's working up a sweat here in the seventh inning. That's the same guy who had his jacket on running the base. <laughs> He's not warm. <laughs> One and two. And the third strikeout for Dibble. I know you Cincinnati fans would like to see that work by Barry Larkin in the ninth inning the other day. Barry Bonds leading off the game, a one run ball game, two to one. And look at this play by Larkin. That's a wow. Barry Bonds thought it was going to be a base hit. Then he made a rather fine play for the second out. It was the Barry Larkin show in the ninth at Cincinnati as they won their first game. Dibble with the bases empty, two out to Bonilla. High fly ball, playable for Davis. And in the seventh, the Pirates go down in order, and Dibble is set down five in a row. Now we played seven innings. Reds still lead 5-2. Toyota presents All Around Champions. Roberto Clemente left his mark on baseball with a style of play that is rarely seen. Beyond the game, Clemente worked tirelessly to help other Latin Americans in need and lost his life while on a mercy mission to earthquake victims in Nicaragua. Toyota has proudly contributed $1,000 to the Roberto Clemente Sports City. Toyota salutes All Around Champions. Just past 5.30 uh, local time here, and the Goodyear blimp shows you the outline of the football field that was used yesterday here. And right after the Steelers defeated San Diego, the ground crew went to work. They worked till 7 o'clock this morning getting this field ready for baseball. And it takes us into the eighth inning. And the first pitch is popped foul and out of play by Eric Davis. Chased by slot, nothing doing. The pitcher is Smiley. And our friends upstairs in the Goodyear blimp showing us the pretty pictures of Pittsburgh and the rivers and the ballpark. See the football field there. It's a funny thing. The Pirates and the and the Steelers were both working out here on Saturday, and the Steelers were working on their on their kickoff return. And Andy Van Slyck went up to one of the guys. He said, "What are you working on that for? You don't have an offensive touchdown on here." <laughs> but they did yesterday. Yeah. Right. Came out of it, came off the snide yesterday. 
And Eric Davis is almost on a snide. He is 0 for 3 today with two strikeouts, and he's 1 for 10. Facing John Smiley. And a pop fly. And a play for a slot. And makes the catch. And Eric Davis is going down too easily as far as Cincinnati fans are concerned. He's 0 for 4 and 1 for 11. Trading baseball cards, I believe. Where's the bubble gum? Probably in his mouth. No. Nope. That hat doesn't fit that kid, does it? No. <laughs> okay. Look Teaching this. the kid how to trade those cards. Yeah. Now at the plate, it's Glenn Braggs. And strike one to him from Smiley, who is in his second inning of work following Zane Smith. And Bill Landrup for the mound. Instead of kickoff return, the Steelers were practicing their kickoffs the other day. Andy Vance likes it. Why are you practicing your kickoffs? You haven't scored an offensive touchdown yet. <laughs> He's a funny guy. One ball, one strike. Saw some clips of Barry Bonds throwing the football. Like a left-handed option quarterback. Boomer Esiason. Braggs hits it up the middle. There's Jose Lee. He's always waiting for the ball. Well, he has some range. Got over there in a hurry. Two out. Broke the bat and grounded out to second. Braggs one for four on the day and in the playoff. Tell you, these Reds are a different team against left-handed pitching. All of their hits today, they're 10 for 28 against left-handers today. They led the National League in hitting 280 average. They are a different ball club against left-handed pitching. That's why I'm sure Jim Leland wants a good performance out of Bob Walk tomorrow night and Doug Graybeck on Wednesday. And the pitchers tomorrow night are going to be the first two who started, Bob Walk and Jose Rijo. We have the double dip tomorrow here on CBS. American League National League. Benzinger hits it to lean. That's all for Cincinnati in the eighth. The Pirates trailing by three, five to two. Five to two will send up Bonds to lead it off. Eighth inning, and as we look back at this game, we see that the Pirates left the bases loaded in the fourth and the fifth, and they have stranded eight. And Mariano Duncan's three-run homer in the fifth inning was the big one. Two on and one out at the time. Billy Hatcher hit a two-run homer in the second, and it's five two. New pitcher. Norm Charlton was the loser in relief in the first game, and he takes over in the eighth inning with an eye toward retiring. Barry Bonds, who leads it off, he's 0 for 2 and 1 for 9. All one to him from Charlton. Charlton was a starter, then they put him in the bullpen, 12 and 9 on the year, two saves. Bonds chased the low pitch and Duncan missed him at first. Now the Pirates get their leadoff man on. Barry Bonds, a 304 hitter against left handers this year. The ball hits the heel of a glove of Mariano Duncan, bounces up, and once the ball bounces out of that glove, you can forget about getting Barry Bonds. Too fast. And a base hit in case you're wondering about the ruling, the eighth hit of the day for Pittsburgh. Charlton has a pretty fair move for a left hander. I'm surprised they're holding him on. Eighth inning, they've got a three run lead. Of course, Bonds will run any time. That's where baseball has changed. And Martinez doesn't hit the ball that way a lot. Martinez, one for three, strike to him. Martinez popped to first. He doubled home a run on the fourth, and then he popped out with a base hit loaded in the fifth. Carmelo used to be with the Cubs, the Padres, the Phils this year. The other clubs before this year. He went around, and he's quickly in the hole on two. don't have either their shortstop or their second baseman cheating at second base. The double play would be nice here, but they're playing for one out. 
When you got a three run lead in the eighth, you want one, not two. There's one right there as Martinez fans. So Charlton, after giving up the hit to Bonds, gets Martinez. Turned that ball over a little bit, didn't he? Looked like it. Good location. It did have a little action away from Martinez. Good location right on the outside corner. One on, one out for Don Slot. He's had a double and given a walk. One for two. First pitch low. And once again, Lou Pinellas playing for one out. There are a lot of teams that don't do that. Duncan is straight away at second base. Larkin is straight away at shortstop. They're not cheating for the double play. See Duncan away from second. Larkin the same at short. And the pitch goes low ball too. They'll take the double play if it comes their way, but they're not playing out of position to try to it. That's right. They're not cheating the second baseman towards second base. They're playing straight up and making sure they get one out. Pretty picture here at Ray River Stadium. And slot hit it foul. Two and one. We have a doubleheader tomorrow on CBS, live at 3 Eastern Time, game three between Boston and the Oakland A's. And then the second part of the twin bill tomorrow night at 8 Eastern for game four of this series between Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. That's tomorrow on CBS. These pirate fans hungry for a rally. Bonds at first, one out. And he dropped a strike in there, two and two. You can see that Charlton hasn't thrown over to first. He's not that concerned with Bonds. Leading by three, five to the score here in the eighth. He wants to get it out. Bonds might just run on his own, but he's not going. And it just missed. Three and two. for Pittsburgh eighth inning and in order to win they have to break through this Cincinnati bullpen and it's ball four and the tying run will come to the plate the fourth walk given to the Pirates today you mentioned that Oakland ball club they dominated the Red Sox in those two games at Fenway. I guess everybody in baseball is thinking can they be beaten. I tell you, they can beat you in a lot of ways. Starting pitching bullpen defense. The long ball the average the stolen base. What do you need they have it. Jose leaned us up he is one for three. Pirates have already stranded eight runners. Two on one out and a strike to Jose Chico they call. He struck out with the base that loaded and one out in the fourth inning of this game one of the big outs of the game. Get a home run in game two over in Cincinnati. And Charlton with a spin move to keep Bonds close. can do that to second base. You can't do that to first base when you're on the rubber. Lean. Ball one low. One and one. Big spot here for Pittsburgh. Lead off. Single by Bonds. An infield hit. Then a walk. Pitcher due up next. Smiley's in the on deck circle, but of course they'll pinch hit. Pirates trail by three. Lean was late. One and two. Charlton after Dibble. Fastballs followed by more fastballs. Looked like the catcher wanted that pitch up, didn't it? Mm -hmm. One and two into third base. Out at second. Safe at first. Gets away. And a run scores. It's five to three. And Duncan really didn't have much of a chance to complete the double play. Well, that's because they were playing straight away. Once again, you do take that chance. Duncan had a long way to go to second base. He wasn't cheating as he normally would, especially with Jose Lean batting. Lean has that 
inclination to go the other way. So because of that, Duncan probably should have held the ball. But he elects to go to first off balance. Even a good throw doesn't have lean, but the bad throw scores Bonds. In between hop skips by Bensinger and Bond scores easily. It took Duncan a long time to get to the base. We're going to have a pinch hitter. Tying run will be at the plate in the person of R.J. Reynolds. Go back for Smiley. Here in the eighth. Smiley pitched two shutout innings. And ball one. First, lead swiped eight bases. This pinch hitting role has been the primary role for R.J. Reynolds all year. He's a switch hitter. Had eight pinch hits during the season. Knows the strikes on him. He takes ball two. Five three. The Pirates have closed the gap. An error by Duncan was the first error of the game. They're two out. Two balls, no strikes to RJ. All three. Charlton is opening the door. Speaking of opening the door, that's exactly what RJ Reynolds was glad he could do Saturday. After being, he was driving his Corvette to the workout, and he was rear-ended. His head went a bit against the dash. He had a headache, a sore back. So he is lucky that he could open the door after that crash coming to his workout on Saturday. But he is A-OK. -okay. Runner at first, two out, three and over the batter. Right, three and one. See if we get any action out of the Pirates here. Probably not in the running department. This is the first inning of work for Charlton. He's given up a hit and a walk. Runner not going. And he swung at it, says the umpire, or it was in the strike zone, three and two. Just caught the outside corner. As you see, Joe Oliver outside, and that ball was indeed a strike. Benzinger drops behind Lean to a go with the pitch. He's at first, two out. Runner going. Popped up. Battle in the eighth. Sabo under it. And it was a fair ball as he caught it. And the inning is over. But the Pirates get one run on one hit, one error, one left. They've left nine and after eight. They trail 5-3. We started the day tied at a game apiece, and the Reds carry a 5 3 lead into the ninth. And from up above, a look at the stadium. Now, a close up look at Stan Belinda, and his teammates call him Opie. He doesn't like that nickname, but they think he looks like Ron Howard. I don't blame him for not looking. <laughs> You're not liking it. But if I looked like Ron Howard when he was a kid, I wouldn't like it either. He looks better Look now. Look at Opie. Opie's not. No, I, I wouldn't like that either. Here we go. And in the ninth <laughs> inning with Belinda, and he gives up a base hit to Joe Oliver. He won't try for two against Bonds. Bonds had that ball to second about the time Oliver got to first, but for Joe Oliver, his second hit of the day. Ron Howard, however, has turned out to be a real good-looking guy. Don't try to make up. <laughs> I heard you. We heard you. This fastball to Joe Oliver lined to left field, so his second hit of the day, and the first hit off a right-hander today for the Reds. And we're going to have a runner for Oliver, and it's going to be Bates. For the Reds. Bates is the one thrown out by LaVaglia the other day in game two. Or in game one. First and second, one out. Eric Davis took off for third. I don't know whether Chris Sabo is saying that's it for me or it for my bat. <laughs> and let's see what the batter does. Hatcher, Billy Hatcher has singled, doubled, and hit a two-run homer. Is he bunting here in the ninth? That's what you'd expect. 
or a hit and run. Billy Bates, the runner. At your punting foul. Billy Hatcher put the Reds on top in the second inning with this two run shot. Joe Oliver was on ahead of Billy. A two run homer a three run homer by Mariano Duncan and that has been it for the Reds. They have a two run lead here in the ninth. I'd like to get this runner all the way around. Bates with a lead nobody out. Linda steps off. With Hatcher bunting there you would assume that. Lou Pinello will be pinch hitting for Norm Charlton, who's on deck. Nobody's warming, however, for the Reds right now. The pitch missed outside, although Randy Myers warmed up early. So it won't take him long to get ready. I think Jeff Reed's coming in from the bullpen. So maybe Randy Myers is ready but there's no one presently warming up for the Reds. And if that's the case unless you're going to take Charlton out of the game why are you bunting here. Lead off man is on. Melinda steps off a base hit by Oliver Bates is running for him. And Hatcher is at the dish. He's at three of the 11 Cincinnati hits. It's bunted in the air, and that's the first out of the inning. Boy, a manager hates to have something like that happen. Martinez made the catch as Hatcher bunted the ball too hard. Gets the bat head under the ball, and an easy play for Martinez. So Jeff Reed now is going to be the pinch hitter since he's going to come in into the. No, it's going to be Hal Morris. Hmm. Reed's in the game already. Lou Pinella, we've talked about it. He does have the luxury of carrying only nine pitchers, nine durable pitchers. So he does have two more extra players than Jim Leland has. Norm Charlton is being lifted. He pitched one inning, one run, one hit, one strikeout, one walk. And Randy Myers will work the bottom of this ninth inning. Al Morris is up, one on, one out. Morris in the playoffs is one for four. Had a terrific season for Cincinnati. And he follows it to the screen. It's very unusual for nobody to be up in the Reds bullpen. Randy Myers had warmed up earlier, but he just threw a few pitches. There he goes. There you are. On cue. He'll work the ninth. It won't take him many pitches to be ready. He's loose, isn't he? In more ways than one. He's smiling, laughing, talking, jabbering. Bates the runner at first, being held by Martinez. There goes the runner, and it's a perfect hit and run, and it's going to result in a base hit. And Bell did a good job of getting back to knock the ball down and prevent the runner from going to third. So Pinella does some running and it pays off. Otherwise, that would have been a double play. Well, sometimes you have the wrong guy covering. Jay Bell is covering on this play. Had it been the other way around and Jose Leand had been covering, could be a double play or at least one out. But Leand is playing Morris to pull, so it would make sense that Bell would be covering. And he makes a nice recovery there. To prevent Bill Bates going to third base. So instead of first and third, it's first and second. It was a nice play by Bell. He recovered nicely. And there is one out, and Larkin is up, and he could blow this one open for the Reds, who lead by two. 5 3 Cincinnati, ninth inning, two on, and one out. Belinda in trouble in his first inning of work. Larkin has had a hit one for four. Ball one to him. Larkin drove home 67 runs during the regular season. None in the playoffs thus far. The 
Pirates and Belinda would like the double play. And the Reds and Larkin would like a base hit to increase their margin. Two on, one out. And the spin move for the Pirates. It will be the top of the order in the ninth inning against Randy Myers. First, we have the Cincinnati ninth. Followed Zane Smith to the mound. Then Landrup, Smiley, Smith gave up all five Cincinnati runs. Larkin pops it up for the second out of the inning. Bonds will take care of it. Always one hands the ball, and there are two out. In the Pirate bullpen, the left-hander is Bob Kipper. Who now Another left-hander, Bob Patterson, joins him. Ted Power is sitting and watching. Pirates have 11 pitchers on their playoff roster. Cincinnati has nine. We're at Three Rivers Stadium. Pittsburgh, ninth inning, two on, two out. The score, 5-3 Cincinnati. There's the line score. The Reds have hit two home runs. Here is a half swing, and the batter held up. Duncan, he's had a single and a home run. That's runner the umpire said he didn't swing. Almost all replays look like hitters go around too far. I think Dutch was right there. He didn't go. He didn't think so? No, nope. neither did Dutch. He's the one who counts. <laughs> two on, two out. And ball one to the batter, Duncan. Ball two from Stan Belinda. You obviously disagree. I mean, well, Jim Leland didn't get too upset about. It. I thought he did cross the plate, but it doesn't matter. A little too far. There are the Pirates down by a couple. Sid Breen with a bat in his hands. He might be batting in the ninth inning. And the catcher slot goes to the mound to talk it over. Here comes Ray Miller. Gloaming here in Pittsburgh. Game started after three o'clock local time. Now we're a little after six. These Reds would like very much to get more, and Belinda's job is to keep it a two-run game and give the top of the order a chance at it in the bottom of the ninth. King, Bell, and Van Slyke, unless they go to Bream or Lavalier or some of the other left-handed hitters they have. It's funny how baseball popularizes some words. I bet nobody would ever even use the word gloaming had Gabby Hart had hit, not hit the home run in the gloaming when 1938, 52 years ago, about this time of year. You're right about that. Two on, two out, two balls, no strikes to Duncan. Duncan has the big hit today, a three-run homer in the fifth. Billy Hatcher hit a two run homer in the second and the Reds have never been behind Cincinnati tied it in the fourth the Pirates tied it in the fourth and the Reds regained the lead in the fifth Duncan lines one and it's a base hit Bates will come to the plate and Vance likes throw is too late and another run for Cincinnati and the man over to third the third hit of the day for Duncan he's driven in four of the six Cincinnati runs Bates the pinch runner scores don't overlook that move by Pinella. And it is a 6-3 game. And don't overlook how Morris pinch hitting for Norm Charlton. Morris with an infield hit. Bates was the pinch runner. So Lou Pinella tried to get another one. He got at least one. And between Duncan and Billy Hatcher, they have driven in all six runs for the Reds today. The throw by Van Slyke is high toward the third baseline. A nice play by Don Slot, but on the play, Morris goes to third and Bates scores easily. Bates put the shoulder down. He wasn't going to be deterred. Van Slyke really didn't have much of a chance to throw him out. He gave it a try, and it's first and third, two out. And a breaking ball. Strike one to the batter, Chris Sabo. At third base, the runner is Hal Morris. Duncan, with his third hit of the day, is perched at first. And there's the score, 6-3. Ball high. 
by to Sabo. Sabo one for four. And two out of 11. In the three games. Well, the Pirates thought they were out of it perhaps when Larkin flied to left. But Duncan nailed him. Pitches ball two. Cincinnati got five runs off the starter Zane Smith and now one off Belinda who had pitched two perfect innings in another game. Sabo hits it foul back here two and two. The Reds have banged out 13 hits about hit Pirates 13 to eight. I think somebody going after that foul ball right above us dropped a shoe or an umbrella. I guess the other shoe dropped. <laughs> oh it's an umbrella. There it is. <laughs> Looked like a shoe. <laughs> yeah, another another umbrella dropped. We're waiting for the other umbrella to drop. Two and two, the count. Two on, two out. Two balls, two strikes. Runner goes from first, and a strikeout in the inning. But a big run for the Reds. On three hits, they leave two. They have left six. We're into the bottom of the ninth, and the visitors have the lead, six to three. You know the purists say that you don't make one handed catches you may or may not know that it's proper technique when an outfielder is fielding a ground ball to use one hand to bring the glove to the shoulder and then throw and you just saw it from one of the finest outfielders in the major league. Well, now the crowd gets into it here as their ball club trails by three there's Van Slyke. do it they say the Pirates as we showed you have not been good at coming from behind and they're going to have to try it against one of the best relievers in the game. First of all the catcher is Jeff Reed after Oliver got the hit they pitch ran for him. Now the pitcher is Randy Myers who had 31 saves during the season. Jeff King's the batter in ball one. This is the second playoff appearance for Myers. Gave one walk in an inning and two thirds in the second game, which Cincinnati won. He finished the game. King is one for four, and that's a strike. It's one and one. These two teams split during the season six wins, six losses, but Cincinnati won four out of six in this part. And a foul ball carries into the stands as Myers came chasing over. He expected a big gust of wind to blow the ball back to him. Now that's Myers for you. He applies himself. Well he's a tenacious competitor and he was traded for a tenacious competitor. You don't see many pitchers near the near the dugout. Open the gate Randy said. Oh baby don't go running in here. The reason that that trade was made the Mets needed a left hander that threw ground ball. Randy Myers is not a ground ball pitcher and he fits in very well with Rob Dibble and Norm Charlton. Myers was a short man who could go on his own and did this year the, the relief man of the year. Jeff King took a strike he went around according to the plate umpire Paul Rungi. That's the first out here in the ninth inning. King apparently didn't think that he had swung the bat. That's the first out in the ninth. Well, you saw Mariano Duncan almost go around, and now Jeff King's probably saying, hey, I didn't go around any more than Duncan did. Just about the same. About the same, yeah. One was a strike, the other wasn't. Myers has retired the first man, and the Pirates need two runners to have a chance. They trail 6-3. And the batter Jay Bell takes a strike as he should after showing the bunt. We're tied at a game apiece. This is the third game. And we'll see who gets the edge. On the corner and that's strike two. Randy got the edge on that one the edge of the outside corner. He did. Say so when you throw that hard and you live on the edge like Randy can. I mean he's. He's a control pitcher along with a guy who throws hard. And he struck him out on the outside part. 
with a fastball. Second out of the inning. See, this pitch is not on the fat part of the plate. It's right on the edge. Randy Myers continues to live on the edge. And now the Pirates with two out and nobody on, trailing by three in the ninth. I have the left-handed batter, Van Slyke, up there. Andy has walked. He's 0 for 3. Ball on. These two out of 11 in the playoff. Jackson, Dibble, Charlton Myers, they used all three of the nasties today. There's a strike. of the ninth inning. Van Slyke trying to wheedle his way on base somehow. Tony and Barnes to follow. Long fly ball in the right, curving and going foul. Keeps the score 6-3. Coordinating producer of Major League Baseball on CBS is Rick LaCivita. Today's telecast directed by Joe Assetti, pregame show produced by Ed Gorn, directed by Duke Struck. Senior producer David Winter, executive producer of CBS Sports is Ted Shaker, and the Reds lead two games to one. And Randy Myers struck out the side. Hard shot like that. And Slyke end of the day, 0 for 4. And the Reds come into this ballpark and win it by the score of six to three. Pittsburgh Pirates left nine, and that made the big difference in the game. Cincinnati left six. They popped the long ball, Hatcher and Duncan with the home runs. And the Reds are on top two games to one after Lee after winning today six to three. We'll have some interviews coming your way. Final score back here at Three Rivers Stadium. Cincinnati Reds take it 6-3, to three, and I'm standing here with two of the heroes of the game to my left, Billy Hatcher, and to my right, Mariano Duncan. And let me start with you first. Both of you guys, all six runs accounted for by you guys. Now, I thought the big hitters were supposed to be the other guys. What's happening? Well, you know, Lou just told us, you know, we got to make something happen. And uh, Mariano, he's been hitting lefties all year very, very hard. So, you know, I'm just trying to get on base, batting eighth. And today was just one of those days that it was me and Mariano's day. You made a comment to me in Cincinnati about the kind of pressure you play with in the second half of the season, and certainly you look awfully loose out here today. Yeah, it's fun. You know, you play a 162-game schedule. That's when it's the toughest. When you get into the playoffs, you have fun because you're playing the same team seven games. You only have to concentrate on that team, so, you know, it makes it a lot funner. Last question. Game 6, 1986, National League Championship Series, Houston against the Mets. You hit a home run in the 14th inning to tie it up. Was that home run bigger than this one or this one today? Well, that one in, in the 14th, I wanted to beat the Mets really, really bad, you know. That was probably the best thing that ever happened to me as far as playing baseball because it was a, it was a thrill I'd never forget. I mean, running around the bases, the people in the Astronome were just going crazy. I, I was nervous. I was shaking when I sat down because I really didn't know what I had done until the next day after we had lost. All right, congratulations on an outstanding Thank you. Game. All right. All right, let's turn around to Mariano Duncan. San Pedro, DeMarco, Reese down in the Dominican Republic. Some yeah, outstanding ball players from down there. Yeah, that's a lot of good ball players, but, you know, for us, I went on a, I'm very happy that kind of game what I have today because, you know, I want to show to the, to the fan and I show to a lot of people that then, like the people say, that, uh, that Eric Davis is supposed to cure the team. They, you know, I don't say nothing bad in particular about Eric Davis, you know, but they're supposed to be the whole team. The night guy that Lou put in the lineup, we're supposed to go into the field and do the best. You know, I don't want that Eric, you know, put a person in up thinking about it, that he want to care the team. I don't want him to think, to think that way because they're supposed to be the whole team. Well, all right. Well, you definitely took a lot of pressure off of Eric Davis and a lot of people. Walk us through what the home run pitch was like and when you knew it was definitely out of here. Walk us through that slowly. Well, you know, the soon what I hit the ball, you know, I hit, I know what I hit the ball very well, but I don't think that I want to go out of the ballpark. You know, but I'm run, when I'm running for first and second, when I see Barry Bonds, you know, go after the ball, I say, that's out of there, you know, and they make me the happy man in the world. So you slowed up a little bit and took yeah, a nice hero yeah. trot. Yeah, I did slow down, and, and I enjoy my home run. All 
All right, Mariano Duncan, congratulations. Thank you very much. All right, let's go back upstairs to Jack Buck and Tim McCarver. Chevrolet player of the game in Mariano Duncan. Oh, you got me talking too fast. Of uh, the Cincinnati Reds, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 in his behalf to the Special Olympics. Two singles, a three-run homer, four RBIs, no doubt that Duncan was the MVP. I guess Jim? the caption on today's game should Don't be donuts and eggs. Duncan and Hatcher, all six runs driven in by Duncan and Hatcher, four by Mariano and two by Billy. I doubt that Pat O'Brien will comment on that remark, but Good. Pat will be along here in a moment. <laughs> Cincinnati won at 6-3. They lead two games to one. <laughs> 